the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his grace and his blessing, now and ever into the age of all ages, amen. We heard the gospel reading according to St. Luke, which is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of two. And in this Sunday, this is the last Sunday of the first month, and the first month gives us the picture of salvation, that our Lord Jesus Christ, with the work of in the Holy Trinity, has brought for all mankind. And this picture that is presented for us uh, is one picture of all of us sitting at the feet of our Lord and offering to him that which is most valuable and most pleasing to him. When she is compared by the Lord Jesus Christ to Simon, he compares her in three things. And he tells Simon that you have not offered these three things, but she has, and because of that, she receives salvation and, and gets the blessing of the Lord. And although there's much to say about this woman who is nameless because she represents much more than who she is and does much more than one act. But uh, a brief meditation on these three uh, is always one that is rich uh, of uh, blessings. The first one, which is very obvious, is that she offers her tears and wipes them with the hair of her head. It is customary that when any in the Jewish tradition that there is a, a special washing that is made before every meal, not only for sanitary purposes, but also for the re religious purposes that God had imposed on the people of Israel. And when there is a special guest, there's a special cleansing also as well. Um, the washing of the feet and entering into the church is a symbol always of repentance. And they would put the vessel in the back of the church as in some of the ancient churches, so that everyone would wash uh, their feet. Maybe not like today, as we have the shoes and socks and other things, but and the streets that are all paved. By the time you would reach the church, even if you were clean at home, you could be filthy. So they would cleanse again, so they approach with cleansed feet, and the priest would wash his hands, so that his hands and feet would be clean. As St. Cyril of Alexandria says, that whenever we approach the Lord Jesus Christ, we make sure our deeds and our way are clean. So the washing of the, of the Lord's feet, although he is without sin and blameless, uh, and as God is perfect and pure and divine, but the washing with, is a reminder for us of the repentance that the first thing that we enter into the church is that we are confessing our sins. That's why the most common of the responses that we say in the liturgy is, Lord, have mercy. And as we are entering, we are offering our repentance to the Lord. This woman, she knew that when she entered into the house, it would not be re received well by the other people. She knew that the Lord Jesus Christ would receive her, and she knew the people would reject her. There are many people who hesitate to come to the church because of the people who may not accept them in the way they want to be received. They may not welcome them in the way that they should be welcomed. Even though I know your church is a model and example for this, but for her, she was not going to be uh, accepted. In fact, St. Ephraim the Syrian has a very nice uh, meditation on how even he imagines that even they would not let her in in the beginning, and if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, he's insisting, let the one who is at the door come. Because for a Pharisee, it was not acceptable for a sinner to be at the same table. And she, knowing this, didn't even dare to sit at the table. She said, I came for one purpose. She went to the feet. And as she's repenting, although we don't know exactly what she was saying, but when she is hearing, she's probably not in her mind what the people are saying or thinking or doing. Her focus is on the Lord. She doesn't know what the people are wearing where they are sitting, what they look like, what is the discussion. Her discussion and her focus is only at the feet of the Lord. This woman, what she did, is a great example of how truly to confess. Sometimes even in the midst of our confession, we may be full of complaints of other people. She could, when Simon is accusing, to look at the Lord, I don't think she moved. She knew, she said, yes, I am a sinner. And I accept my sin. And whatever they say, I'm worthy of and probably more. 
But she said, the one thing I want is forgiveness from you and salvation. The focus on, in her life was on the Lord. It, it is an example of, of how we have the perfect and true repentance. The second thing was that she had offered uh, the kisses without ceasing to the Lord. And this uh, is an example of uh, the love of the Christian that is always uh, being um, offered to him. When we compare to Simon, that he, instead of accepting the Lord, you notice that instead of repenting, he was judging. And he judged the woman. And after he judged the woman, instead of uh, receiving the Lord in the proper way, he began to criticize the Lord. It shows us that if we judge one another, we end up to condemn even the Lord Jesus Christ. And this condemnation, it started to, uh, it continued with the other people sitting at the table. He said, who is this? He's receiving the sinners. They came to receive him. They came to worship him. They came to acknowledge him, but they left criticizing and questioning the Lord, the Lord of glory. <clears throat> this uh, was not left without notice by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why he insists he says, she loved much. How that he looks at each one of us and sees how much we love. The, the people look at each other and see how many things that we do right and wrong. We like to praise each other and encourage each other, which is good. But what the Lord was looking at each heart to examine, how much do you love? How much is your heart really uh, in this great uh, mystery of love, of godliness with the Lord. But the third one, which I want to take a little more time, is that of the fragrant oil. And the fragrant oil, yes, is an expression of love and of faith, as many of the fathers said. But this is the work of true and perfect worship and service of God. It's as if uh, when we move, before the throne of God, and we are each going to worship before the throne of God. One time there was a priest who had another, one of his priests, uh, his friend had departed. And so he had a vision of this priest before the throne of God. And he saw the angels and the saints worshiping in the Sherbim and the Seraphim. And he said, the priest who had departed, told him, he said, come worship like I worship before the throne. So he said he worshiped and gave him a tanya. And <clears throat> before him, he said, I saw this and uh, I couldn't move. <laughs> so he said, no, you offer the same way. Of course, it's an example for us of how do we worship before the Lord? How do we worship before the Lord? And it's not a physical <laughs> movement and actions and bowing, that is part of it. But the true Christian worship, the true worship of the Holy Trinity is one that uh, changes our life and uh, our destiny. What in the Syrian word for worship means to bow, to kneel, and take the blessing. So it's not just, yes, we offer our life as a sacrifice to God, but it's actually in, in it, within it, is the blessing that we need to encourage. Every time we worship, that's why you see one of most of the hymns, we are speaking about the great Doksa, Doksa Betri, the glory that we offer to the Holy Trinity. And we come to worship. We worship every day the Lord in our homes and, and wherever we are. But when we come here to worship, we have, we have chosen, like the Lord had said of Mary, of Bethany, the best part. Now, some people confuse between this woman, Mary of Bethany, and Mary Magdalene. And actually, it's an old confusion, even in the West, we find people go back and forth. But when you look carefully, they are different uh, times, different people, and different places. So there's one right before Holy Week, 
there's one that is after the raising of Lazarus. This is in a different house with a different person. Mary Magdalene is mentioned in Luke chapter 8. So many people said they wouldn't include her without naming her in chapter 7, without mentioning it in chapter 8. But they are <clears throat> three, uh, three women that offer in different ways. But when the Lord told Martha that Mary has chosen the best part, he is speaking about this worship. There is a service that Mary, Martha was doing. Sometimes we are so busy in the service that we end to criticize other servants and other things that is happening. But the Lord was reminding all of us that to keep the best part, we have many gifts that we offer. As a deacon will say, before we enter, offer, offer, offer an order. We offer prayers, we offer repentance, we offer gifts, we offer love. But the offer in order, which is the, to offer to God, the worship in spirit and in truth. As St. Cyril says, when we offer <clears throat> the virtue to God, that will never be taken away. That's the best part. There is uh, nothing better than devotion towards him, as St. Cyril says. And this, what we say, is the golden part of our life. That's why we call Sunday the first day of the week, um, and it is the crown of the week, because the day that we offer worship to God. And how much is the crown fitting and pleasing in our life? How much? There are some people, they said, that it's difficult to go one day even without worship to God in, uh, in uh, spirit and truth. Or say for Pope Corollas of blessed memory, there was nothing more important of all the activities that he did. He said thousands of liturgies. But not by number, but in this, its importance. As if he would tell us that the day without this worship, or the week without this worship, is not counted in my life. <laughs> it was, it's important to serve, but it's much more important to worship God. And how you worship in your room, how you worship in your uh, place, your cave, your, your area of worship, is also part of how the community of God worships. Meaning that when we pray in the first hour in the book of Ephesians, that we are worshiping together, even though we are in different places. And when we gather in this time to worship, that we each are encouraging and supporting one another in our worship of God. That, that there's nothing better, as the Lord is saying, that we, when we worship here. There's nothing more important that we can do in our week or in our life than here. If we think back just a short time when we couldn't worship in this way, Every time now when we enter into the church and take communion, we say this is the great blessing that we have been waiting for. Our hearts were yearning for. Or as the psalm says, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, that our, our souls are hungry and thirsty for what God is going to provide for us. This work, which is the most important, and I think, when we re-examine how that we worship, how can we do better in our worship of God? As the psalmist says, who will deliver me from this body of death? This, the things that we struggle with in the flesh to worship uh, in spirit and in truth. Uh, St. John, I think, the beloved, when he was writing uh, in chapter 4, and he had understood that the same mystery of this woman, the Samaritan woman, is very similar to this woman in Luke chapter 7 and John chapter 12. Um, <clears throat> it is the mystery when one understands who we are and what is our great shortcomings that we have. It is when we are able to offer that true worship. And so why the Lord told the Samaritan woman about worship was because she could grasp after she had confessed, after she repented, after her heart was full of the love of God, she understood how to worship. 
And the same for this woman. So it's connected. The Kiri Alayson is related to the Tukhsabu Kiri and is related to the Alleluia. If we fully repent and we know who we are, we're able to glorify God. And when we glorify God, we worship Him with a true and perfect worship. As we will shortly hear the, the words, uh, when we say, lift up your hearts, we say our hearts are with the Lord. Because our hearts were down <laughs> in the process of repentance. But now that we come to offer worship, that the Lord has received us as the Lord lifted up the woman and said, go and uh, that you have been saved. Your, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the gift that we have received. So let us worship him in spirit and truth, glorify him and offer him that which is befitting to him. Glory be to him now and ever and to the age of all ages.